In June 2008, the Federal Trade Commission released its third report examining the alcohol beverage industry's efforts to voluntarily self-regulate their own advertising practices. Uh, the 2008 report, uh, we believe, affirms the, uh, the great role that voluntary advertising codes can play in balancing the First Amendment rights of advertisers against the, uh, the need to regulate an industry. Uh, as a little background, the focus of this report, as in prior years, was the industry's uh, self-regulatory efforts. And those efforts really center around uh, three different codes of voluntary uh, advertising compliance. There's the Beer Institute Code for the beer industry, the Wine Institute Code for the wine industry, and the Discus Code for the distilled spirits industry. Over the years, these codes, which have been in place for many, many years, uh, have slowly evolved, and the, uh, the FTC reports over the last decade or so have examined that evolution and played a part in that evolution. Uh, it's important to remember the, the uh, FTC's background here, which is their first report was in 1999, their second report was in 2003. And in 2003, there were a couple of significant recommendations made, and so there are two major changes that the 2008 report could really take into account and focus on that were not true from the results of the 2003 report. Uh, and those two changes are, first of all, that uh, much of the discussion about these voluntary codes deals with the placement. How many people can be in an audience that are above and below the legal drinking age? In 2003, two out of three of the voluntary codes only called for a majority standard, 50% standard, had to be above the legal drinking age. Uh, the 2003 report's release coincided with the announcement of the other two uh, trade associations that they would be adopting a 70% standard. So 70% or more of an audience on a given piece of media, a television show, a radio show, a magazine, had to be above the legal drinking age. Uh, the second major change since 2003 involves the way complaints are resolved. In 2003, only one of the three trade associations, major trade associations, had a, uh, a third-party review mechanism. In other words, a non-industry group that would take a look at complaints about the industry's advertisements and render decisions. Since that 2003 report, all three trade associations have moved to having a third-party review mechanism. The, uh, results of the, the results of the 2008 look at industry alcohol advertising are fairly significant. Uh, first of all, you've got to remember this was a very large cross-section of the industry, uh, 12 companies representing over 70% of all advertising dollars spent by the alcohol beverage industry. And those 12 companies include beer companies, wine companies, distilled spirits companies. So you get a very broad uh, and representative sample of the industry. And when looking at the key question of alcohol advertising placement, the FTC found some very encouraging numbers. Now they began by noting that you will never get 100% compliance because placement has to be based on a guess, uh, an educated guess of course, but a guess as to what audience composition a particular television show, radio show, magazine might have. Well looking back at then the actual numbers, they found that 92.5% of all placements met the industry's 70% voluntary standard. Uh, moreover, if you focused on advertising impressions, which takes into account larger media buys versus smaller media buys, there was a 97% compliance rate with the industry's voluntary advertising codes. Uh, moreover, the study by the FTC found that 3.5% of all industry advertising dollars by at least the 12 companies surveyed were uh, for responsibility messages. Now the uh, FTC did make some recommendations, but the most significant recommendation is the one that they did not make. Uh, advocates have been ar arguing that the 70% standard is too low, it should be 75 or even 85%. Uh, the 
Federal Trade Commission said it would not recommend changes to the 70 percent standard at this time. Uh, they added, however, that with the 2010 census, that will provide new demographic data and that the industry ought to look at that data and uh, decide whether or not changes to the 70 percent standard are needed then. Uh, the next secondary recommendation of the FTC involves sponsorship and uh, they want uh, the FTC wants a more clear uh, coverage of sponsorships both in the placement and content codes of the voluntary industry advertising codes. Uh, next, the FTC made recommendations concerning new media and in particular uh, these are things like text messaging and other rather new forms of advertisement. Uh, they want to see both uh, voluntary buying guidelines for new media and one of the major trade associations has already adopted such guidelines uh, as well as further examination as new media emerge in order to decide what kinds of uh, what kinds of mechanisms are needed with respect to new media in order to uh, advertise responsibly within the codes uh, and then the final uh, recommendation. Uh, there are also some very minor secondary recommendations, but the other uh, recommendation of note involves third-party review. Although all three industry uh, industry associations now have a third-party review mechanism, uh, the FTC would like to see more explicit acceptance both of anonymous complaints and competitor complaints. They feel like that would uh, improve compliance uh, with the codes. And finally, for the future, there is one relatively significant uh, enforcement initiative, which is instead of a large industry cross-section, as was done in 1999, 2003, and now in 2008, in the future, the FTC plans to have two to four companies uh, examined every year, and that might include not just the largest companies, but some smaller companies, to try to further ensure an ongoing culture of compliance uh, within the industry. Uh, but to, to, uh, to recap, uh, we believe that the 2008, uh, the 2008 FTC report really reaffirms the success of voluntary advertising codes in both balancing the needs of advertisers and their First Amendment rights along with the need to protect youth from an overexposure to alcohol advertisements.